I'm Delphine, I work for Zero Waste France. So um, if, I, if I had been told one year and a half ago that I would be standing in front of you uh, to tell you this story, I simply wouldn't have believed it. Um, for me, everything started in 2011 in Brussels. We, we had, I had my first meeting with uh, Rosano El Corini, but you, you haven't met him, you, haven't, you had not the chance to meet him today. He's the first uh, who implemented the Zero Waste strategy in Europe. And uh, he told us about what they have achieved in Capanori. And it was, as always, very, very inspiring. And Joanne Marc, uh, that we heard uh, this morning, uh, proposed us to, to transform uh, Gaia Europe into Zero Waste Europe. And we, we joined the movement. Uh, we, uh, by we, I mean my organization. At uh, this time, our name was National Center for Independent Information on Waste. We had been existing uh, since 1997. It was an NGO. It's still it's, it's an NGO uh, which was which was founded by a, a network of local organizations fighting against incineration and landfills. And the independent in our name means that we are funded by, uh, by members, mostly, by individuals and organizations. Uh, and it allows us to be completely independent in what we say and what we do. Uh, and we are, we are avoiding any kind of uh, lobby. So, um, we, we had been promoting uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, composting for, uh, for many years. Um, but, but without using the name zero waste, because in 2011, talking about zero waste in France was kind of impossible unless wanted to be treated as mad persons or utopists. So we, we have waited for others in Europe to prove otherwise. And they did, as you, you, could, you could have seen like all day, they did way beyond our expectations. So last year, uh, in 2014, we took the bet that French society and political class were ready to hear that the waste was more than just a beautiful idea, but also a concrete and successful strategy. So we decided to launch the waste, the zero waste movement in France. We organized a big conference. Oh, it's me. So it, it, it's, not, it's not on purpose. <laughs> Um, we organized a big conference uh, held by uh, local organizations in Paris, no, not in Paris, outside Paris, it has its importance. Um, on a Saturday, on a rainy Saturday, and in a very difficult to find uh, venue. But um, it was a big success. We had uh, more than 500 people uh, who came to, to listen to the pioneers of the zero waste movement in Europe talking about what they have achieved, uh, showing that it was possible to, yeah, to, to do so, so. And we started to think with all these uh, people, we started to think about how we, we could undertake to do so in France. For us, it was um, a turning point for, uh, for a small organization of four employees. We, um, we had a large media coverage uh, it was very impressive, and uh, all, all, all people were very happy with, uh, with this, uh, yeah, this new energy we, we, we tried to, yeah, to, to launch. So people started to, um, to come to us to ask if they could join Zero Waste France. Uh, citizens, a lot of citizens came to, came to us, but the problem was that at this moment Zero Waste France had no legal ex existence. It was just a movement, so people couldn't become members just like a movement. And we, we, but we have been uh, thinking about changing our name for many years, because uh, I mean National Center for Independent Information on Waste, or CNID for the shorter version, is uh, neither uh, sexy nor understandable. <laughs> and. Um, and it was also a bit confusing for a lot of people. Uh, pe some of them uh, thinking that we were a sort of public agency working on waste or a research center. So we, we 
took a big step, like uh, we, we decided to become Zero Waste France in June uh, 2014, so it, this is the vote. Uh, you can see that we are very happy. <laughs> And uh, we became very easy to identify, especially by municipalities. A lot of municipalities um, had already contacted us just after the launch of Zero Waste because they wanted to implement uh, such strategies in their uh, territories. So for all of those municipalities, we, we have designed a collective program with trainings, study trips, uh, exchanges and emulation, and tools to help to help them to implement their uh, their projects. So yeah, that says uh, the. Uh, you, I don't see. If, yeah, okay, it's gonna be fine. Uh, the first step of this work was to bring them all to Italy to meet the the pioneers of the DOS in Europe, and it was an amazing adventure. So. Yeah, if you could picture it just for a moment, imagine a group of 20 people uh, made of our crazy little team, uh, people from the Ministry of Environment, uh, local uh, representative, um, technicians from the municipalities, uh, sharing long hours of bus together after having visited a smelly composting plant. I can tell you that uh, it, it really binds the team. But jokes aside, we, we left Italy with many, many ideas, many projects uh, all together and a big amount of hope in our ability to, to realize them, to achieve them. Since then, we have trained uh, our municipalities on how to implement zero waste strategies in their territory. New uh, other technical uh, trainings are already planned. Uh, the first one will be very soon in June uh, on payage youth for system. I'm looking at my colleague because she's the one who's organizing it, <laughs> and she has a lot of work. Um, and the next one will be on bio waste management uh, very soon, and we will probably have a, another study trip uh, in Europe. And we already had a, a study trip in France. Uh, because we are doing a lot of things in France, but never all together like in the OA strategies. It's like some of them have the good payage useful systems, some of them uh, have a good reusable diapers system, but it's never all in the same place as we can see when we visit a zero waste uh, municipality. So um, for me, the, the power of. Oh, too fast. Oh, sorry. For me, the power of this program is that uh, it offers a space of communication for municipalities to exchange on their problems, to find solutions together with other municipalities. It's a very human dimension that is possible, I think, because we are an NGO, and only because of that. It wouldn't be possible with, I think, like a governmental organization. So new municipalities knock on our door regularly to ask for advice and they are uh, sometimes pushed by local organizations that we have been working with uh, since many years. And um, we have involved these organizations, uh, these local organizations in the Zero Waste ter Territories program because our will is to teach municipalities and local organizations how to work together to implement, this, to implement these strategies. Because it's a key uh, element of success is having all the stakeholders involved. So they need to know how to work together because in many parts of, part of France, they are, very, they are more used to be in opposition than in collaboration. And we, we have, uh, what's, what's interesting is that we have witnessed a very a uh, tremendous uh, change in the local action on waste since we have launched Zero Waste France. Before, uh, our local relays were only uh, our local organizations working on waste, uh, like fighting against incineration and landfills, generally ruled by uh, retired people, uh, exhausted, after, exhausted after long, long, day, long years of fighting. And now we, we have seen the, the birth of new, new kind of organizations uh, run by uh, young and active people, sometimes with uh, very, very interesting skills on race-related issues. 
and uh, they are very efficient at promoting a positive uh, step uh, and positive approach to their uh, to their local officials. So, and some of them want to become a zero zero waste France local group. Uh, and it's very new for us and it's very exciting. We have launched the first of them in, in, in Lyon uh, last month. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Um, the, the picture wouldn't be complete if I wasn't to mention the entrepreneurs. Um, since last year, five to ten times a week, we, we have received um, d demands, requests from entrepreneurs who are developing uh, zero waste solutions, business on zero waste. And to help them with their project, to, to empower them, we have, uh, we have developed a system of micro grants uh, to finance, for example, a new equipment, because it's always very small, very small uh, companies. So like just one or two people and they don't have a lot of money. And sometimes they just want to finance a new equipment or an impact study, for example. So these micro grants uh, are for, uh, for this, are, are how to help them uh, to do so. And uh, we have gathered in a network uh, because we had a lot of them, we have gathered in a network the entrepreneurs of the packaging free sector. So all these people you see in the picture are members of the of this network, and they are uh, people who are who, who have a project or who are already having a pa packaging free shop, or uh, they are um, producing products without packaging, or they are designing furnitures for uh, packaging free shops. And they work all together in this network. They are not uh, competitors. They are like in collaboration uh, to gather information, tools, uh, communication tools. Uh, we work also together on the regulation uh, to see how we could improve the regulation to facilitate their work. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting network. We also have another network which is older. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is, yeah, um, well, we'll be back. Uh, it's the Réseau Consigne, so Victor told you about the deposit refund schemes. So it's a, it's a network where we, we aim at promoting the return of deposit refund systems for refillable bottles uh, in, uh, in France, because it has completely, almost completely disappeared. So we work all together. And um, we also try to to work, uh, to, yeah, to gather in, in, in a group the entrepreneurs of the reusable diapers, bio-waste management uh, and composting, with the exception of big companies, as you can imagine, we, are, we won't have in our network uh, Suez and Veolia. I don't know if you have them in here, like in Bulgaria, no? Lucky you. <laughs> um, and we organize meetings between entrepreneurs and municipalities to show municipalities that zero waste provides jobs, provide innovation. So we, we make all these people in the same room and they talk about their, their projects. Uh, this way they can, uh, I don't know, find, find synergies between, uh, between what they are doing. So and we, municipalities can start to support this kind of businesses. So it's, a, it's, very, it's very efficient for, for everybody. All right, so it's, I, I will translate it. <laughs> so in, in the meantime, uh, thanks to our active advocacy work and the resounding success of the zero waste municipalities uh, around the world, uh, our Minister of Environment, ooh, I have to be fast, <laughs> uh, has launched her own call for project. It's called the Zero Waste Territories Call for Project. Uh, when she did decided to do, to do so, she didn't uh, tell anybody in her team. So they just ran at us to ask us what was zero waste. So at the beginning we advised them, but we rapidly took our distances because, um, because they are, if, even if we agree with the beginning of the approach, like we, we, we agree with the prevention, the reuse, the recycling and so on, the call for project promotes uh, energy recovery. So we keep an eye on them. We still advise when we are asked to, 
Um, but we, we let the thing happen and we will see what's going on. But we work with many of the municipalities that have been awarded in this call for projects. So we, are, uh, we still have a link. But it's, you know, it's always a risk when you launch a popular concept. You can have someone who, who just take it over and misrepresent it. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's the risk. But I have to mention that even if we don't agree with every, every thing in the policy that the Ministry of Environment is, is doing, uh, things have moved forward uh, since last year. Our work has probably something to do with it. But um, the Parliament is about to um, adopt um, a target of uh, generalization of bio waste source separation by 2025, a ban on non compostable plastic bags, and uh, planned obsolescence is now uh, an offense. So we, 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 are, we have now more and more uh, regulation uh, helpful to implement zero waste. In the end, for me, uh, this change of name has been a winning strategy which has attracted uh, younger, more dynamic, uh, innovative people. We, are, we still have our members uh, from before, but we have new members, new, new kind of members, so it's, a, it's, a very, it's very rich for us. We went from four to ten employees. Um, the numbers of our volunteers has exploded. And... Uh, because we were kind of boring last year, we decided to write a book. So <laughs> in November, we, we've launched the Zero Waste Scenario. And uh, as we are talking, the book is almost sold out. So it's a, it's a very good news. Uh, but we've done all of this without losing our uh, very strong identity of expert and activist organization. Allows us to present ourselves as guardians of the Zero Waste concept in France and attract the interest of many, many uh, stakeholders. And we are now the, the preferred, uh, kind of the preferred civil society spokesperson for the media um, on every race-related issue. So it's very good news for us. We have to answer many journalists. The concept is more and more uh, widely agreed and understood. We talk uh, more and more uh, about uh, waste, but it's no longer seen as something dirty that we'd have to hide, but it's more seen that something uh, that allows us to be innovative, to be creative. So today we are still waiting for pinning down the, the first, uh, the first uh, the French municipalities on the OS Europe's map, but uh, it will probably won't be long. And uh, what's great is that in less than one year and a half, uh, a really strong zero waste uh, community is born in France. And uh, I hope it hasn't finished to grow. Thank you.